web inspector within your browser. Now every browser has uh, a web inspector of some kind. Um, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, uh, Edge, they all have web inspectors. Today we're going to look at the one for Firefox, which I think is really the best one to use if you are a design-centric person working on websites. So uh, let's take a look at it real quick. So a lot of times when you're making a website and you um, are writing your CSS, uh, a common approach for people just starting out is to kind of write some CSS, hope it works, check it in the browser. If it doesn't work, go back, write some more CSS uh, until you get it to where you want it to be. But there's a much better way to go about doing this, and I'm going to show you uh, that using uh, the Web Inspector. So let's say I'm working on this design for uh, wellsfargoadvisors.com, which is a website I used to work on. Um, and I am trying to decide how uh, I want either the layout to look here or uh, how I want these colors to look, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I've, let's pretend that I've got this started uh, as, a, as a project and I've got the local copy, the one that's on my computer, of the HTML file loaded up in the browser, and I'm designing this. I haven't released it yet. So if I want to use the Web Inspector, um, I can right-click on any piece of content on this web page, and then select Inspect Element from the menu that comes up. And it's going to open up this little uh, toolbox, more or less. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you um, all of the HTML in the uh, in the document on the page, and then it'll show you the uh, CSS that is applied to the element that you right-clicked on. So when you're in here, so let's say, um, okay, so before I go any farther, I want to show you a couple things that you can do to change uh, the preferences here. So there's this three-dot menu up here on the right-hand side, and if you click on that, you can choose where you want this to dock. So you can dock it to the right, you can dock it to the left, you can dock it to the bottom, or you can have a separate window, so it's just kind of sitting there. Either, whatever way you want to go is fine. Um, and then there's other preferences that you can do. I prefer dark mode, but if you go into settings, you can change uh, a bunch of different stuff in here. You can show change to a light mode theme, you can keep uh, the dark mode theme, it really doesn't matter if it's all uh, just your personal preference. So back to the inspector itself. So I'm going to have it in a separate window here, and let's go ahead and set up uh, our window so we can get a little bit better look here. So let's say I want to see what it looks like uh, for these areas uh, to have a border underneath them. So I'm going to right click on this area, I'm going to select inspect element, that's going to get highlighted here, so notice when I'm hovering over the piece of HTML uh, in the Web Inspector, you can see that it's highlighted in the screen. So I've got that highlighted in my Web Inspector. I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to click this plus button. And this plus button is going to start a new CSS rule for me. And it's going to start it using a selector that would be appropriate for that piece. So I'm going to say, uh, now that I have this selector, I'm going to tab into the brackets. I'm going to say border, bottom, one pixel solid, something like that. So now I have that line there. Now it's important to note that having put that there, this does not persist. This does not get saved to your uh, this does not get saved to your local file, but it does give you the ability to come in here and kind of mess around and actually design directly in the browser, uh, and that way you can see uh, if if things look the way that you want them to. Um, so maybe I want to try a different font. So I could say font family, uh, sans serif or something like that, or let's do Helvetica. Um, okay. So that did not take, so I'm going to toggle this uh, down arrow here, this arrow right outside the HTML element to open up and look at the child elements. So I'm going to highlight that one, and now I see that the uh, the class I actually need to target is this uh, u-link-headline. So in here, if I were to click on the font family and say Helvetica, 
then you can see that it updates over here. And maybe I like that, maybe that's something that I want to carry forward with. So if any of these things that you do while you're designing in the browser seem like something that you want to take to your actual working CSS, in Firefox, there's a really handy tab on the third column called Changes. And if you click on that, it's going to show you everything that you've changed. So here, this is the new stuff that we added to the columns block dot columns block commentary uh, element. So we got that border there. We can see where we changed uh, the font family for the ulink headline. And if I like these, I can either uh, copy each rule individually. So if you hover over uh, top right corner, there's a, a little link that comes up that says copy rule. It'll copy just this style rule to your clipboard. But if you've got all of this in here and you like that, then you can click copy all changes and then you'll have that in your clipboard. And then you can go back to your CSS and paste it. So this is immensely handy. Uh, this is a great skill to have, not just for developing your own work, but as a designer working on a team, um, if you have the ability to uh, design in the browser, first of all, you're designing in the context uh, in which the final piece of work will be viewed. So it's a lot more accurate than putting together a Photoshop document. But also, if you are ever in a position where you need to present uh, a work in progress to stakeholders and they have feedback that maybe they want to change some colors or maybe they want to change some fonts or something like that, the ability to do this means that in the meeting with the stakeholders, you can open up the web inspector, make the changes that they are suggesting to the elements that they're suggesting it for on the fly and have it represented in real time versus having to go back and, you know, say, uh, make a whole new Photoshop document to uh, reflect the changes that they requested. This will save you a lot of time and it is immensely useful. So the last thing that I'll show you um, in the Firefox Dev Tools is uh, this, this tab that says Layout. So in the right-hand column, it's the third column in the Firefox Dev Tools, there's a tab that says layout and if you click on that it's going to um, show you all of the places that um, that you have declared uh, display grid so all of these different elements on under this list have uh, display grid declared on them and this is really really helpful for when you're putting your layouts together so if you uh, toggle a checkbox here let's see which one there we go um, it's going to um, put an overlay grid on the element for you. So this is really helpful because then you can see the grid lines. So we know that this is uh, grid line 1, grid line 2, grid line 3, grid line 4. That way, when you set up your columns and you're trying to place your elements, you know you can say, okay, this element here, I want to grid line, uh, grid column start 2, grid column end 3 and then you can really get a good visual representation of uh, putting your grid together. So that's super handy. I highly, highly, highly encourage you to use the Web Inspector. Um, it will make developing sites dramatically more simple and you'll have immediate knowledge of what your CSS is doing.